Okay, I think we are coming live on YouTube. Hi guys, hello, hello. It is great to see you guys. There is a lot to talk about today on the Omicron COVID front. Uh, President Biden has made uh, remarks today about how he plans to combat, combat Omicron. But my question to you is, is it a little too little too late? Is it right on time? What do you guys think about what he's saying? I'm going to first outline what his plan is, okay? His plan for fighting Omicron. We know that we're literally besieged, under siege, underwater with Omicron right now. Uh, any of you who are watching TV or wherever you live, I know that you know this. Um, I've had patients, I literally had a patient in the last few days, um, come to see me. She uh, had symptoms uh, that could have been an upper respiratory infection, like a cold, um, could have been uh, COVID, you know, given now the symptoms that we have, you really honestly can't tell. And I saw her and she was absolutely terrified that she wouldn't be able to get COVID tested. Um, she had been trying to get and find a COVID test and had not been able to find one within a 50 mile radius of her home. Luckily, we had a COVID test and we were able to COVID test her in, our, in the office. But the point being is we all know whether you're a doctor, a patient, wherever you live, you know that lines for testing, trying to find a test over the counter is almost nearly impossible. And uh, COVID cases are increasing through the roof. So Biden laid out a plan today uh, for combating what we are dealing with. And today, I really, in addition to telling you what he is saying and what he has said, I really want to know, what do you think about this? Do you think this is going to help? Do you think that this is going to work? I want to know. I'll also tell you my thoughts as well. Okay. Um, the other thing too, is we'll take some comments from you guys. I want to, you know, obviously hear what you think. Uh, please write in the comments what you think. Uh, I will make sure that I read some of those uh, as we get towards the end of the, um, of the, uh, of this video today. So thank you for joining me. By the way, I'm Dr. Jen Caudill. I'm a practicing family physician. I'm an on-air health expert and video creator. I do daily videos for those of you who don't know me. Um, and uh, it's great to see you guys. Okay, so let's start with uh, Biden's remarks, okay? So first thing that I think is huge is that, as you guys probably heard and you've seen headlines, Biden plans to deliver uh, basically half a billion, that's 500 million at-home COVID tests. Um, he plans to buy them, the government, and to send them to homes uh, all throughout America. 500 million tests, which, by the way, is a huge number. This is awesome. Uh, however, uh, this won't be done until January. OK, um, I want to know what you think about that. And I'm going to talk about this as I as I go, because, I mean, look, we need tests. Lord knows uh, we we need tests. I mean, that is that is so, so, so important. Um but I do worry, I have to say, about the tests coming in January. Um, I do worry about that because we know we're seeing this surge right now. Part of me wonders, hey, could you have worked out something with the um, the test company makers and slashed prices down to like five bucks a test or increased uh, production of these tests right now? I mean, look, I certainly don't work for the government. And don't know how these things work. And I imagine it's not as simple as just saying that. I do recognize that. But there's a part of me that as a doctor that's like, it's great that we're getting more tests. But wow, January? Really? January? But there's more that he said, okay? Um, the, other, the other thing about these tests is, um, and Sherry, I see you on Facebook saying that's not soon enough. Um, you know, one of the things that he says is that this would be distributed for free to people, which is excellent that this would be for free, um, but you have to request it through a website. And I am fine with that, but I am sensitive to the concept and the idea that many people may not have access to the web or may not be web savvy. So that's something I think we have to consider. Um, there's also a few other things. Uh, he's also allowing and making it so that private health insurance will cover at-home testing so that you'll be able to, we'll all be able to get reimbursed for uh, at home COVID tests that we that we buy um, and that plans can provide tests to those uh, without insurance as well. That would be great. I mean, because, you know, if you bought these COVID tests, I have a couple sitting on my um, my ledge over there. I've done videos on how to do at home COVID tests. Um, you know, it they're like 20, 25 bucks. It depends. And some places are price gouging because they know that, you know, look, it's it's really tough to get these tests. So many places are actually charging a lot more. So wouldn't it be great if there was a way to uh, get 
get these cheaper, at least get reimbursed for them. And that is uh, is important. Uh, excuse me. I'm just getting myself more comfortable. You guys can see my sweatpants comfy today. Cynthia on YouTube, I see you saying you think it's important that everyone has access to the test. It could be sooner, however, before it spreads more. I don't disagree with you there. Um, all right. So, and yes, the idea of private insurance, great. I mean, that would be great to be able to be reimbursed for this, right? Like a reimbursable uh, expense. Also, a few other things. Um, now, this week, the federal government is going to be setting up emergency testing sites in certain places throughout the country. I do love and like this idea, right? And this would actually go into effect even before Christmas, according to Biden, um, that there would be emergency sort of uh, testing sites that will be set up, hopefully that will help offload and unload some of the crazy lines that we're seeing with testing sites throughout the country that we're seeing in New York and things like that. Of course, these testing sites would not be literally everywhere in every, in every city. So there's still going to be cities without. But the fact that they're going to be starting to do this, I think is great. Um, you know, let me know what you think about that. Um, and um, Deborah, you said, why do you need to test if you're not sick enough to be uh, hospitalized? Well, you need to test to make sure that you're not passing on COVID to other people um, because other people who get COVID might become sick enough to become hospitalized. So that's very, very important. And Julie, as you said, so that you can protect other people around you. You're exactly right. OK, so moving on. Um, and by the way, these uh, emergency testing sites will start in New York City before Christmas time. OK, um, also. Um, Biden was pretty confident that if you are vaccinated and, you know, ideally boosted, you can and you follow the precautions, you can celebrate the holidays upcoming, which I thought was nice of him to, to throw that in. Um, he made some comments about fighting uh, COVID misinformation, which I think is really important. Uh, this is so, so important, guys, because misinformation is really, really out there hugely, hugely strong. Um, so I, I think that that's really important that he's talking about that. I don't think there are enough consequences for people who put out um, misinformation. Um, I don't know how many real sort of tangible endpoints we have to that, but the importance of fighting uh, misinformation is important. Also, the government has earmarked um, uh, um, a PPE, personal protective equipment, things like N95s, gloves, et cetera, for stockpiling to make sure that we have enough PPE, which is excellent. Um, also, what's really cool is that they're going to be the government's going to be deploying um, uh, basically federal health resources to help hospitals that are overworked and strained and stressed. Because, as you know, with, with hospitalizations in some places climbing, what that means is that healthcare systems are overwhelmed and they're burdened, right? And that's um, that's really tough. Ms., I see you're watching from Canada on Facebook. It's great to have you guys. I, I've been seeing notes from Canada and other places throughout the world. I see that many of your regions and locations are actually going on lockdown. So I hope that you guys are doing okay, but I think that this is uh, this is really important to keep note of, okay? Um, let's see here. Um, all righty, let me take a look, okay. And some of you just, one of you just said that you wish there were consequences for people who spread misinformation, kind of do too, to be honest with you. Um, and I also think that when healthcare providers spread misinformation, you know, that is, that is, particularly problematic, you know. All righty. So they're going to deploy the government. Um, that is the uh, uh, federal government, about a thousand workers. It's military medical personnel. Um, for any people that work for the military that are military, God bless you. I'm, I mean, I just I, look literally God bless you. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I've always had like this special place in my heart for the, for the military and those men and women who serve. And honestly, if I were more courageous, I would have served myself. Um, what I did do was after my first job in Baltimore, I did take a temporary medical assignment at Little Rock Air Force Base in Little Rock, Arkansas. This was about 10 years ago. And I worked in aerospace medicine. And I basically worked with active duty service men and women. Um, and I was involved with um, uh, allowing men to fly, men and women to fly. I sometimes what we call de them, uh, which means grounding them. Uh, we assessed them for different medical conditions, et cetera. It was fascinating. It was amazing. Really one of the best experiences I've had in medicine. And those men and women are so awesome. So a uh, shout out to Little Rock Air Force Base because it was a, an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. Donna Margin, you said you served and your husband did as well. Thank you so much for your service. Um, let us know, by the way, what division of the... Um, um, 
military you were in, by the way, uh, please do. At, um, at Little Rock Air Force Base, we we flew C-130s. Uh, that's the airplanes that were flown. So it just was a really, really cool experience and really amazing. So my hat off, my hat's off to you all. Um, all right. So military medical personnel are going to be, ah, Tanisha, your army retired. Lisa, that's right. You are Navy. Yes, that is awesome. Um, pretty amazing how, how many um, servicemen and women we have watching. Marine, you are Navy. I, I have to stop with this because this is, I have to like do this because it's awesome. Uh, Donna, Marine Corps, uh, Kelly, we have lots of Navy, lots of Navy folks. This is awesome. Um, so uh, that's right. So just um, thank you guys, because uh, also in this situation, you are um, helping your, your fellow colleagues are helping us. So um, moving forward, uh, uh, the other thing is that FEMA, is, like as I mentioned, is going to be opening up uh, uh, pop-up vaccine clinics. There's also going to be uh, testing sites, new testing sites that are going to be opened up. Um, Biden is also using the Defense Production Act to increase production of tests. That's not, I don't believe, a new thing. I think he announced that before, but it's something that he reiterated. Um, let's see here. And then, you know, guys, this is really important because Omicron, as we know, is as of last week, was 73% of all new infections. This is as of last week. So, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So, I mean, what do you what do you what do you think? I'm just sort of taking a look to see what you guys are thinking about this. I saw some of you guys mention the testing is good. You worry about access. Um, what do you think? Um, do you think this is going to get us where we need to go? Does this reassure you? Um, does this not reassure you? How are you? How are you feeling? By the way, I'm wearing my vaccinated shirt. I haven't worn one of my vaccinated shirts in forever. Um, I literally lived in these throughout the entire pandemic. These are, and many of you guys have these shirts as well too. Uh, they're available on my website at drjencoddle.com. Um, but uh, I wanted to wear this shirt in solidarity for reminding us where we are and, um, you know, uh, that we will get through this together. So the question is, um, is this going to work? You know, is this going to work or is this not going to work? I mean, I certainly am hopeful. Um, and usually when I do these videos, I'm usually telling you more facts than opinion. OK, because with medical stuff, it's a lot of facts. Right. But, you know, a little bit of my opinion is that um, I'm really glad to see some of these changes that Biden is putting in place. Many of them he actually started even before Omicron came in. Um, but um, and Jill, by the way, you said you joined the superstar group, but you can't get in. Do you have to let me in. Um, try to make a post, Jill. Um, uh, see, try to make a post in the group and just ask, like, um, am I here? And we'll let you know. By the way, Jill is asking about the Dr. Jen Superstars group. That's one of my subscription groups on Facebook. Uh, consider joining that. You can find that on the pinned comment here. Um, we're going to be doing a holiday soiree for uh, the holidays this year, especially if you're not going home or anything like that. Please join. And then, of course, we do private lives. We'll have our private live tomorrow with just our group. Um, and, uh, yeah, we do exclusive content and things like that. It's a really special group. So we'd love to have you join us. Shane, you're watching from, from Ireland. Um, Jill, you're not able to post. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, I would double check and just make sure that you have joined. Make sure you click the link. I think you can click any of you guys who are interested. There's a pinned comment where you can click that link. Um, uh, that's like become a supporter and see if that works as well. Um, Keith, you said there are people still getting sick when they take the vaccine. So you're not sure. And Keith, you bring up a really important important point that I think a lot of people are concerned about, right? They say, well, why should I get the vaccine if you can still get sick with the vaccine? The reason why is because if you get the vaccine, you're less likely to die. Okay. And really, it's, it's as huge as that. It's as simple as that and as big as that. The real reason is that if you get the vaccine and you get COVID, you're less likely to die. You're less likely to be hospitalized. You're less likely to be put on a ventilator and things like that. That is the reason why we want us to get vaccinated. Yes, it's still possible to get um, uh, the vaccine. Lisa, thank you for the stars. So appreciate it. Um, but but the, the likelihood that you get it is less um, and everything is less pretty much. OK, um, so that's really important to keep in mind is you don't want to die from COVID. If you get COVID and it's a little stuffy nose and this and that and you don't pass it on to anyone else and you kind of just hunker down and then it goes away. Well, gosh, that's 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 not the best scenario. The best scenario would be if you didn't get it at all. But um, it's better than being so, so um, it's it's better than being so, so sick that you're hospitalized. That's the purpose. Daniel, you're watching live from Italy. Um, let's see here. It's great to see you guys. And you are watching from Aubrey, Texas. Um, how safe is it to travel to the U.S. in the surge of Omicron? You live in uh, Gambia. Um, that's Buba. I think that's your name, if I'm saying that correctly. 
I think all travel right now, there's a certain level of risk that's associated with all travel, especially international travel. Um, some countries have been designated uh, sort of destinations of concern or sort of higher risk destinations. You want to take a look at the CDC and World Health Organization um, uh, maps and what they are saying in terms of risk. You also want to look at your country's guidelines and the United States uh, if you're able to come in uh, to the States. I mean, I know there's different rules and things like that. Uh, and you also need to weigh the personal risk and benefit, right? There are some people that have to travel internationally. There's some people that don't. You want to think about all of those variables, okay? Sid, you're watching from Toronto, Canada. Um, and Peter, you said, why isn't anyone talking about treatments? Nothing in the media. Get vaccinated. Nothing makes sense. When will the media talk about this? Very important. And then your um, then your message comes off. P uh, Peter, you're writing in from YouTube. It's a great question. We are talking about treatments, but the problem with COVID is that we don't have a lot of proven treatments. That's one of the reasons why we push vaccines. The pill for COVID that we are all hoping for has not actually been approved yet by the FDA. Um, I think one of them has been approved overseas. So that's actually not an approved treatment. Um, and then there's uh, monoclonal antibodies, which is a treatment that I had done videos on. You guys have seen those. Um, those are treatments that you have to get through your doctor. Uh, it's an IV treatment that has to be set up for non-hospitalized patients who are at high risk for progressing to, co uh, to hospitalization or severe COVID, okay? That's important. And then the other FDA approved treatments are uh, treatments that you get when you're hospitalized. Peter, the reason why we don't always talk about treatments is we don't have very many. If there were treatments, like if I could prescribe a pill, that's what I'd be talking about. That's what we'd be talking about. And yes, there are things that can help your body overall, making sure that you're well nourished. Um, you know, some people recommend certain vitamins and this and that, but none of those cure COVID. They may help and support your overall immune system as you're fighting it off, may not be a bad idea, but I mean, uh, Peter, that's really the answer to your question. So don't be offended or feel like we're hiding anything, anybody. If you're saying, why aren't they talking about treatments? The reason why is because if you've been following COVID, you know that we don't have enough we don't have a lot of treatments. This is a brand new virus, and that's one of the problems, okay? Um, Teresa says, uh, asks, and she's asking, and I want to ask this question too for you guys. Are people visiting family this Christmas or prefer to stay home? She'd like to know, so please respond. Let us know in the comments. Are you traveling for the holiday or are you not traveling for the holiday? You guys know I did the video that I um, recently put up. My family did decide to cancel our Christmas. Um, I did a video on that. Maybe I'll repost it in the next couple of days just to sort of explain our logic and how we went about that. It was just really important to us. Um, we all, my brother uh, and his wife, my parents and myself, we all live in different places. Uh, we've all been sort of hunkering down and we're all vaccinated for the most part. But for, as a family, it, we felt like it was the wisest thing for us to cancel Christmas. As I've said before, I do think that there are multiple options here. I don't think that the only option is to cancel Christmas. I think that in some situations, it's possible to visit family and friends and do that safely. Obviously, you want to be vaccinated and boosted. Obviously, you want to get tested right before seeing them. Ventilation, all that good stuff, um, and maybe some other ideas as well. Uh, Joel on YouTube, you said you are not traveling for the holidays. And Lisa, you are not traveling for the holidays. You said Massachusetts numbers are too high right now. I remember you said that on our last slide, Lisa. Latanya Hawkins, you were staying home as well. Um, let's see here. Ron McGaw, you are hiding and you know it. Ron, I am not hiding. <laughs> um, let, let me um, let me just say something because Ron, you actually bring up something I did want to ask you guys. So since this is a little bit more of a, of a casual video, I did want to ask you, and I've often think about this because I get the most like trolling on my videos. Of course, when I do COVID videos, you guys know that, and you guys are amazing because you like you you deal with it, and people sometimes say really mean things, and you guys are like awesome and amazing, and I don't mind trolls. Um, I, I call to them trolls. Maybe that's not a nice word, but I don't mind people who don't believe in what I believe in watching the videos, because as I've always said to you guys, I'm hopeful that maybe they'll hear something that they don't normally hear in the scope of people that they watch. Right. So if you're if if you don't like what I'm saying, you may not be listening to other people like me that are saying things like me. So I might be one of the few people that folks who are not interested in what I'm saying, uh, I might be one of the few people that they actually hear. And perhaps it'll make a difference. So I'm always optimistic. But this brings me to my question, okay? Um, Cynthia, by the way, you got your booster on Monday. Congratulations, by the way. Um, let's see here. Uh, and uh, Jill, you want to come to the Christmas party? Okay, honey, you can come to the Christmas party. Just make sure you join the supporters group, the Become a Supporter. Let us know how you do with that, by the way. Um, so this is what I wanted to know. And this is really meant sincerely. And I and for those, if, I want anyone to respond. Ouch, I'm sitting on my legs and it hurts. Oh my gosh, I'm clearly not in kindergarten anymore. Oh, sitting cross-legged is not easy. 
anymore. I'm going to turn this this way. Oh, whew, so I can rest. Um, so this is the thing. And maybe those of you who are non-vaxxers can comment on this too. Like for those of you who don't like what I have to say and are not into the vaccine and are anti-vaccine and anti-COVID and COVID is just the flu and or the cold, whatever. What I don't understand is why you comment on my videos. Like my point being is, and I'm being completely serious, help me out. What I mean is that why do you care if I advocate the vaccine to other people? I mean, I don't go to anti, well, no, I mean, sometimes maybe I do go to anti, maybe sometimes I do go to anti uh, people who are against the vaccine and post on their comments. I'm like, yeah, you're wrong. Is that what it is? Is it just the desire to sort of get across your opinion? I just always wonder why, why people who disagree with me feel so strongly about commenting about it. I would imagine that those who disagree with me, um, wouldn't care what I would say and would just keep on scrolling. Um, and I guess I just want to know, uh, you know, for those of you who don't like what I'm saying and come back, by the way, guys, because you're always here. The trolls are always here. And now I'm, it's like radio silence. I'm like looking on this computer. I'm like waiting for those of you who hate what I say. I'm waiting for you. Tell me why it is you, but why you spend time. Oh, here. Uh, okay. I don't understand that. But anyway, let me know if you so choose. Um, now it's like chirp, 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 chirp. I just, I don't know what, but why do you care? Like why even bother? Why stay, why go into a realm which you don't agree? I know Lisa, they're so quiet. I'm like, hello, where are you guys? Where are you guys? But no comments. Um, my thing is like, yeah, why do you, why bother coming? Why wouldn't you actually want to stay in the space with people who believe what you believe? Um, how's it? Okay, Brad, here we go. Thank you for commenting. Brad Scott says, how is it trolling asking a question that has scientific merit? Well, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about people who troll, uh, not asking questions uh, that have scientific merit because that's asking a question. Okay. I'm talking about people that are, are mean spirited or mean or evil or things like that. That's what I'm talking about or who are really unkind. Um, so I'm just waiting guys. Gosh, it's so quiet. <laughs> this is the quietest it's ever been. Like minutes have gone by and it's like, Maureen, you're not trolling, checking both sides. Totally fine. Maureen, I believe in that. I believe in getting the information. Totally fine. I'm just talking about people that are like evil and mean, but no, I mean, okay, well, um, okay. All right. Still waiting. Literally, Brad, you said what? Literally six times. Tell me, because I can't see all the comments so fast. You'll have to tell me what you said six times. Uh, Maureen, you said you posted twice. I, I don't see all the comments because there's just too many comments. So I'm sorry if I missed a comment. It's just because I can't see. There's hundreds of comments on every video. And I love you guys for commenting. You guys are amazing. Um, anyway. Uh, okay. Well, okay. I, I really actually did want to know. Um, so, oh, Brad, you keep posting this. It's a long post. Okay. It's a comment says uh, it's a 30 vaccinate. So, Brad, I saw your question. I'll be honest. I don't understand your question. Um, so now I've finally seen your question. I don't actually understand what you're asking. Okay. Sometimes when I don't answer a question, it's because I may not actually understand what the question is or the, the question doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Um, Kara, you said you're super worried. 26 year old chronic severe asthma. He has been vaccinated, but no booster yet. We'll get him that booster. That is so important. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Denise, a vaccine is prevention, not a cure. You're exactly right. Vaccines do not cure COVID, right? Vaccines are not a treatment for COVID. Vaccines are prevention, okay? They prevent severe illness and death and hospitalization, and they reduce the likelihood of getting COVID and things like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so there we go. Let's see here. Let's check out um, YouTube. Cynthia, you got your booster on Monday. We said that. Um, Daryl, you said you're, you're staying home for the holiday. It's all about safety. I love that. 
Um, so anyway, guys, um, Biden, I'm glad that he released his plan. I think that this is a great start. I do worry about us just not having testing. Um, it just sort of makes me like, I, I kind of feel a little panicked about it. I do feel worried about it. And I do feel like, um, many of us are going to get COVID before this is all over. Um, and, um, Gerda, you said, is the booster safe? It absolutely is safe. Please go out and get that booster. So important. Um, Valerie, you got vaccinated on December 1st. When can you get your booster? I'm so glad that you asked about that. So uh, for Moderna and Pfizer, you can get your boosters six months after you've completed your series. Um, for uh, Johnson & Johnson, you can get it two months after. Okay. Um, so there we go. Uh, Gary, does a PCR test detect Omicron? Yes, that is true. Um and John, you mentioned hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine was a treatment that we had hoped for in the beginning of COVID. We had hoped that it might work uh, against COVID and help treat COVID. But study after study after study has actually shown that it does not help treat COVID. Uh, some studies, I believe, actually show that it could be dangerous in the situation of, of uh, certain conditions, okay? So I know a lot of people say, well, why not use hydroxychloroquine? It's cheap, it's been around the same. Well, it's because it's actually, it actually doesn't work to treat COVID. Um, it's also why we don't use ivermectin. It actually doesn't work to treat it. And um, there are many people who say that they do, but remember that just because people say that they do doesn't mean that they do. Me saying they don't doesn't mean that they don't, but the science says that they don't. So what I'm talking about are the actual studies, the actual literature that you can read on your own um, that is out there actually showing that these things do not work. So um, I think it's really, really important to note. Eliza, do the vaccines have the virus in them? Great question. No, the vaccines do not have the virus in them, okay? So there's no vaccine shedding. There's no vaccine spreading or things like that. You can't get COVID from getting the vaccine. It's a great question. Um, and uh, let's see. Deborah, you're asking about being asymptomatic with no signs. Well, if you're asymptomatic, you must be saying that you got you got you you had a test, you tested positive for COVID, but you don't have any symptoms. You still have to do all the stuff. You still have to quarantine, isolate, all of that stuff. Okay. It's good that you're asymptomatic, but remember you can still spread it to other people, even though you're asymptomatic because you've been diagnosed with it. Um, Jill, you've been asking, uh, you've asked if the monoclonal antibodies work against Omicron. There have been some ideas and nudges that maybe it does not work as well. I don't know what the final verdict is, but there have been rumblings that it does not work as well. I still do recommend that if you get COVID and you are high risk and eligible for monoclonal antibodies, I would call your doctor and ask if you are eligible and I would get them if you're able to. Okay. Uh, Emma, what treatments work for COVID? Well, remember what I said was that monoclonal antibodies is, is for people who are outpatients. And then we've got remdesivir and other treatments for inpatients. We don't have COVID pills yet. So other than that, it's what we call supportive care. That's rest and fluids and Tylenol and Motrin, whatever is okay for you, according to your doctor um, and, and other symptomatic treatments. Okay. All righty. Um, Scott, is the booster safe? You feel like your heart is missing a beat. You need to see your doctor and you're right. Just check with your doctor, Scott. I mean, I, I certainly can't tell you what, what, what it is, um, because you know, I'm not your doctor and I'm also not able to listen to your heart, but if you have any concerns, uh, make sure you check with your doctor. Um, Dahlia, is there a booster for Johnson and Johnson? The, the Johnson and Johnson booster would be the Johnson and Johnson shot. So those people who got the Johnson and Johnson booster got Johnson and Johnson again. Remember, however, that um, Pfizer and Moderna are now recommended over Johnson & Johnson. So my recommendation is that if you got Johnson & Johnson and you haven't gotten your booster, go ahead and get your booster, but get Pfizer and Moderna, okay, as your booster, okay? Um, all righty. And uh, Penny, okay, here come the trolls, right? Just about everything this woman says are lies. Well, so Penny, I'd love to ask you, Penny Shanahan, um, you know, tell me why um, you even bother coming over to my page when you don't like what I say. I just didn't know. I, I was just waiting for the, the trolls to come back. <laughs> So, Penny, maybe you can comment and let us know why you even bother commenting on the page since you don't like what I say. Um, is that snarky? I don't mean to be snarky. I really just wondered. Um, Penny, where are you? I, maybe this is not very nice, but I wonder. Um, Christine, you know three people that got their third booster and gotten very sick. It's because you can actually have side effects from the booster. Just like you do the, um, Dahlia said, Penny, what are your facts? <laughs> Penny, we are waiting. We are waiting, Penny. Feel free to respond. Um, 
So uh, in terms of um, the, why you have side effects is that's the, when we get symptoms from the vaccine, it's our body's response to being vaccinated. It's our body um, uh, showing that the, the medicine or rather the vaccine is working inside of us. Okay. Um, where Penny, where are you? Now Tony is asking where Penny is. <laughs> I was wait. I look. I'm just. I just want answers. I just want to know. So um, yeah. So don't be worried about having. Um, don't be worried about having uh, symptoms or side effects if you get the COVID vaccine because that actually means that your body is working. Okay. Um, let's see here, Karen on YouTube. You said, do you think there will come a time where a fully vaccinated but asymptomatic person will be allowed to go to work and the unvaccinated will have to isolate? That's an interesting concept. Well. In some cases that, I, I see what you're saying, uh, but in some some cases that that happens, right? Like if you're unvaccinated and you have exposure, you still do need to, I have to look at the CDC guidelines, but there's still things that you should be doing. Oh, Penny, okay, thank you for commenting. Um, Penny says you should be showing your facts. Why haven't you talked about adverse effects? That's a great question. I actually have. I've talked about adverse effects a lot, and um, I did a video on um, the side effects, the most common side effects from getting the vaccines. I've done videos on long-term effects of the vaccines. I've done videos on the VAERS, that's the vaccine adverse effects uh, system where people put in comments and stuff like that. So Penny, I do want to let you know, I have done videos on those because I know a lot of people are concerned. Um, the Let me just say, make a comment about the VAERS system because I think that's really important. A lot of people, um, Penny, you also said the deaths that the jab has caused. That literally seems like a talking point that's out of everybody who believes a certain thing says that phrase. That's not the case. It's not deaths that the jab has caused. Um, this vaccine is overwhelmingly safe and effective. And remember that the uh, VAERS, um, uh, the VAERS effects or the, the VAERS system is a system where anybody can write anything that they felt happened around the time they got the vaccine. The reporting of those does not um, prove cause and effect. And the VAERS system even says, if you go to the website, that the reporting of these you know, symptoms or side effects is not proof that the vaccine caused them. So somebody might go into VAERS and say, I got the vaccine and then I got a heart attack. Well, that's their reporting. But, but that doesn't mean that, that the vaccine caused the heart attack just because someone reported it. And VAERS actually says that very clearly. If you actually go to the VAERS website, a lot of people talk about VAERS, but they've never actually visited it. I do invite you all, go to the website. Don't listen to other people who are out there talking about VAERS. If you haven't seen it yourself, go there. Um, Karen, you said it sounded like we will still get sick even if vaccinated and boosted. Could you please clarify what we meant? Um, okay, I'll try to clarify that. Um, so, and Maureen, you're asking about Bell's policy and history of blood clots. I did videos on those too. I'm not trying to dismiss that at all because it's very, very important. I literally did a video on the likelihood of blood clots and um, the Bell's policy thing. So I've done videos on all those things because I know that there are concerns um, that people had because of um, somebody having something that was close to the time that they got the vaccine. And what people do is they associate that that Bell's policy or that this or that that was caused by the vaccine. So what I invite you to do is just to take a look um, through my YouTube videos or on Facebook. You can actually see literally videos about that that will explain exactly how to think about that and why those are not reasons to be concerned about the vaccine. And I say this quite sincerely. I mean, why wouldn't you have concerns about Bell's palsy, uh, all this other stuff that you hear? Even deaths. I did a video on deaths after the COVID vaccine, how to think about that. OK, so I'm, I'm saying all this now. Again, I wish I could actually sum up all this stuff. It's literally like probably 10 videos or more that I've done about these because I know people are concerned. So I want you really to take a look at it. OK. Um, and uh, OK, so I, we should go soon. Do you have to take the vaccine every year? We don't know if we do or not yet. That's Gerda. We don't know if we have to take it every year or not. Rufus says, ignore the trolls. They're negative energy. I'm glad, Penny, that you asked me the questions that you asked. I think that's really important. And I can deal better with questions. And this is not directed at Penny. I'm just really talking in general. I'm just saying I can deal better with questions that people have and not sort of hate commentary. OK, um, let's see here. OK. 
Okay. And then one person else, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this, said that they were scared about this idea that people who are vaccinated can get ill. Yes, I understand that that can be scary, but this is the difference in why you should be less scared. It does seem with Omicron that people who are vaccinated can still get COVID. They can get Omicron. However, if you get the booster, you're less likely to get it. Okay. But don't, uh, but what should make you feel good about that situation is that most people, it seems, that are vaccinated and or boosted who get Omicron, if they do, they have mild symptoms. It seems like that vaccine and perhaps the booster are keeping people from getting really, really sick. Remember the vaccines, one of their main purposes was to keep us from getting super sick and in the hospital. And for a lot of the tens and purposes, that's what they're doing. So don't necessarily let it scare you that you can get the vac- that you can get COVID. It's the main reason why we shouldn't use that as an excuse not to get the vaccine. People will say, well, I can get COVID anyway. Why should I get the vaccine? It's because if you get the vaccine and you get COVID, you're not as likely to die from it. Okay. So that's really the point. All right. Uh, Haloon, you asked what kind of doctor I am. Um, I am a family doctor. It is great to see you guys. I want to thank you guys all for your stars. Your stars are so sweet. By the way, um, I'm doing my first ever because you guys have been so amazing and generous with the stars on Facebook and the super chats and super stickers um, on YouTube. Cynthia, you asked where did I get my medical degree? I got it from um, UMD and J School of Osteopathic Medicine. And I got my college degree from Princeton, uh, where I graduated from honors. And I did a three-year residency in family medicine as well. And um, for those of you who are new to my page, I invite you to check out my website at drjencaudle.com. Um, you can see my credentials, but you can also see like my bio and stuff like that. And you can just learn about who I am. Because I think that's really important to know who you're listening to, right? You want to know the credentials of the person you're listening to. You should always want that. Um, but for those of you who send them the most stars at the end of the month of December, there are going to be some prizes given. First time I've ever done that. It's my way of thanking you uh, because you guys are amazing and you help keep uh, everything running and allow me to do this work. And I do believe in it. Um, also consider joining my superstars group on Facebook. We're having a holiday soiree to celebrate Christmas and the holidays. Uh, there'll be games and prizes and all this good stuff. Okay. And um, somebody is calling people a monster on Facebook. Please don't. Um, please be be kind and please be gentle to everyone. We're all just trying to get through COVID together, really. Um, so let's please be nice to one another. Um, as, as always, I welcome everyone because we're all in this together, regardless of what we believe, aren't we? Aren't we all here together? We still have to live together and we still have to function and we all want to come out of this alive. So please, um, you know, let's just make sure that we're kind and we're thoughtful and we're considerate to one another. OK, I'll do my best to answer your questions. If I don't, it's not because I don't want to. It's because I sometimes can't answer all the questions. Um, but if you're not liked and follow my page, for those of you on uh, Facebook, please do. Um, if you're on YouTube, please uh, subscribe and uh, click the little bell for updates, guys. You guys are amazing. I love you. Take care of one another. Okay. And um, stay safe, get vaccinated, get boosted. And I'll be back tomorrow with more. Bye. All right, guys. Bye.